Christ, open up your mouth and give my praise. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Tell them, say, I don't know about you, but I love him with all my heart. And because of that, tell them, see, I got a feeling. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I've been through, that everything, not just something, but everything is going to be all right. If you believe that everything is going to be all right on this Sunday morning, give us a praise. We got to tell them it's all right now. It's all right. God be the glory for the things that he has done. Amen. We are the spirit of Christ. We're yet saved. We're sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. How many of y'all are glad to be saved on yeah. this Sunday morning? Yeah. Amen. We woke up this morning with our minds stayed on Jesus. Amen. Got noticed this morning that the electricity was out. Amen. We have diff four different bills on this campus. And so all of the property is just, for whatever reason, down. We got a notice uh, Thursday. That something was going on with the power, so we <clears throat> wasn't here because we've been gone all week. The last time I was here was Wednesday, and so I don't know if anybody else has been here since Wednesday, but the last time I was here, everything was good, so we noticed that during the storm, we did receive notice. So, um, of course, Amron is closed on, on Sundays, and I tried to go through their messaging service, and they responded saying, call them uh, in the morning. And so uh, we're thankful to God. <laughs> And we're praising God for his sweet son, Jesus. Yeah, and we're thankful for salvation. And we're thankful yeah. for I've learned anything, Deacon Freddie, uh, the last three years, I've learned that you have to make necessary adjustments. Yeah. Uh, if, if we survive the pandemic, we can, we can survive a power out. Yeah. So uh, we have a busy day today, so my wife is still... I just told her, take your time. Amen. But thank God for you being here. And, and we're excited for what God is doing in the life of this church. I want to thank all of you all, those of you that follow us, that are supporting us. Amen. We are on a device. And so be here Wednesday. Amen. We're believing uh, that everything is going to be good for us Wednesday. And we'll have a good power pack service with music. Amen. And singing. So come out Wednesday at 7 p.m. Amen. For worship. Amen. You know what we do. In the summer and the winter, when we have to close church before the pandemic, and we had to be on Zoom on Sundays, we we uh, had uh, what we call Sunday on Wednesday. Amen. So we want you to be in place for our, in lieu of not having music, you'll be in, in, a good, in, in for a good treat on Wednesday. Let's give God praise for these preachers that serve in the the women of God that serve in ministry. Let's praise God for all the leaders that are in ministry. Our newly appointed assistant supervisor of the Department of Women. And she's a member here. God bless you, uh, woman of God. Mother, Antoinette Lucas, let's praise God for her. serving in the jurisdiction in our seminars. You've done a great job. Represented well. Let's praise God for her. Praise God for all of you that were in place. Amen. We had a nice crowd on Wednesday. Amen. You supported your pastor. We appreciate you. Thank God for all of you that have been serving all week long in various capacities from hospitality with our very own uh, Sister Lona and Sister Chanel. Amen. Praise God for them. Praise God for all of our ushers that have been serving. Amen. All week long. Let's praise God for them. Real quickly, if you would go to your Bibles, Exodus chapter 32, real quick, Exodus 32, we've already sang happy birthday, but we did our head deacon, the chair of our deacon board, a happy 80th birthday. If you would be so kind, uh, thank God for our viewing audience, amen, we'll make this very short. Rest on your feet for the reading of the word of the Lord. Exodus chapter 32, amen. I'll have some announcements that I want to share with you all, what God is doing. Exodus 32. Meet me at verse number 22. 
Exodus 32, verse 22. And Aaron said, Let not, and Aaron said, Let not the anger of the Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me, then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Verse 27 says, And he said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp. Slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. The word of the Lord is blessed. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for an opportunity to stand before these, your people, who have assembled themselves here, O oh God, to hear a word, hear it all creation. We ask that you will bless us, that we will preach this word and give this word with thought and clarity, that people receive it under the anointing, that they will cause, that will cause their lives to be changed. We bless you for it now. In Jesus' name, we thank you that you've rebuked the devourer for our sake, cast devils out of our mind, that you, O oh God, have anointed us to say yes to the counsel of your will. Not faith in you, but the faith of you to call those things that be not as though they were. We give your name, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yes, and it is so. Yes. Before you take your seat, look at somebody and tell them, say, where do you stand? Where do you stand? And ask them this question. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Look at somebody else and tell them, say, where do you stand? Where do you stand? Ask them, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? And I hope you would answer and say, I'm on the Lord's I'm side. On the Lord's side. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We, we want to take this thought. Amen. To take the Lord's side is not a small issue. Amen. To take the Lord's side puts you at odds with the world. No man can serve two masters. I believe that one of the greatest benefits as a preacher is the word of God. That if, I, if, if I say what it says, then I'm never wrong. Come on. If the preacher says what the word says, then it's never wrong. Dr. Mike Murdoch says it this way, that I'm never wrong when I quote God. Just tell somebody, I'm never wrong, I'm never wrong. when I quote God. I'm never wrong. For the last few days, there's been this phrase that's been in my mind. It's been in my heart. It's been, even as I've been in this convocation this week, I'm very well aware of where it came from. It's a phrase in this text, who is on the Lord's side? It was the Reverend Timothy Wright who coined the song, where do you stand? Who is on the Lord's side? And I said, I know exactly where it came from. The setting was when Aaron had led the children of Israel to worship a golden calf. And we read in this text that when Moses made the statement, he said, who is on the Lord's side? What do you say? Let him come unto me. Now, friend, this is the point that I want to make right now. When Moses made this statement, who's on the Lord's side, he wouldn't just ask him to show of hands. It was a matter of life and death. Tell somebody it was a matter of life and death. What he was doing, he was calling for separation. Tell somebody he was calling for separation. I believe he mentioned more. He was calling for a clear distinction between factions. He was giving everyone an opportunity for a decision. You see, Israel had committed idolatry, which is spiritual adultery. And God was giving them a chance to forsake their sin and turn back to him. And the fact is, every one of us had to make this decision. Anybody know that you had to make the decision if you was going to choose the world or if you was going to choose the Lord? And so you had to ask yourself, who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? And the sad truth of events waiting is, for much too long, it's been difficult to tell which side people are really on. We've been through some difficult times here in this world, here in the United States, here in Missouri, and around the world. And like you, I've not enjoyed it all, but I have to say that I'm finally beginning to understand what it means to have the hand of the Lord on my life. Anybody know that in 2023, you've gone through some things? In 2022, you've gone through some things, and you've realized that God has been on your side. That's why David said, if it had not been for the Lord, 
who was on my side, let Israel say that if it had not been for the Lord, I would have gone and lost my mind if God wasn't on my side. I was faced with some dilemmas these last three years where it was really a make or break, but I had to know that he separated me for a purpose. Tell somebody, he separated me for a purpose. So the sad truth of the matter is people have been on the wrong side. God desires, I believe, to save the church. He desires to save this nation, desires to save the nations around the world. And so God has allowed uh, the world to go through and come in a pandemic, be in a pandemic, and to come out of a pandemic and have post-pandemic issues. And I believe that God is trying to let things squeeze us and cause us to be wrung out for the purpose, watch this, of separation, for the purpose of distinction. As I was sitting in the pulpit the other day, God says, I'm bringing clarity to the church. Come on, tell somebody, he's bringing clarity to the church. And so as we go back to our text, I want you to see how severe this matter was. When we look at verse 26, 27, and 28, the Bible says that after the question was asked in verse 6, 26, who's on the Lord's side? The son of uh, Levi gathered, and thus says the Lord, put every man his sword by his side and go in and out. Look what, look what uh, he said. Aaron said, uh, all I know is they start questioning me about where you was, and I told them to get the gold, and then from the gold, put it in the fire, out came the cap. Like, you, you know he had to be tripping. Tell somebody, the second man was tripping. <laughs> You must understand the, the pastor, Moses, had left to go get a revelation from God and let the church in charge with his assistant. Yes. You do know who Aaron was. Aaron was uh, Moses' excuse. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. See, that's why you got to be careful making excuses with God because God will always try to back you up. But sometimes the very thing you make the excuse for will come and bite you. You do understand it was Aaron that was Moses' excuse. He said, I, I, I can't go because I, 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 I stutter. He said, that's okay. Take Aaron with you. He'll be your mouthpiece. And it was Aaron, while he was getting the word from the Lord, while he's receiving a download from Mount Sinai from the Lord, that he has to come down. God says, get down. The people are sinning. He goes to Aaron. What happened? All I know is they start talking about you not being here and we don't know what has been become of you. And the first thing you do is say, uh, get the gold. First thing you say is get the gold. You didn't, you didn't try to look for me. And you know one text says that he said Aaron was supposed to be up there with him. What do you do when you're in position and your second man is swaying the people? Hmm. Just when you read the text, it says, uh, all of a sudden, we, put, we told him to take the gold, and then we put him in the fire, and then out came a cap. It, it reads like a joke. <laughs> the, 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 I believe the goldsmith created the cap as an image. So he said, oh, do, do you know it sounds like what happened in the Garden of Eden, a blame game? Come on, tell somebody, whenever they're sin, there's always blame. Oh, y'all don't hear. Think, think about it. Think about it. When, when, you know, when people get caught up, they don't want to always tell the truth. And see, that's what folks don't like about me. I'm too blunt. I tell on myself. Come on, anybody real? You, you tell on yourself? <laughs> no, y'all say don't take all that. But, but, but ever since Adam and Eve messed up, it's been a blame game. And now you see Aaron, who is, who is of the Levitical priesthood, who has been set apart to lead the Levitical priesthood, who had status, who, who was the second in command, causes the people to be naked. What do you do when leadership causes walking nakedness? I believe it was a natural nakedness, but I also believe it's spiritual. I believe it, it shows some level of exposure that they were not separated to be exclusively used for God. So God is saying, where do you stand? Come on, tell somebody, somebody where do you stand? Where do you stand? You can't have two gods. God said, you should have no other God before me. This mixture was deadly. Tell somebody it was deadly. And guess what? It had to be removed. Whenever things is deadly in the church, it has to be cut. It has to be removed. Because if not, that canker worm, that cancerous spirit will affect the whole church. What's been happening in this nation and in this world and even the church 
God is trying to hear me, and I want you to write this down. He's trying to identify a poisonous mixture that has gotten into the church. Come on. Y'all don't be real. Come on, tell somebody the church has become poisonous. And this poison has, has taken the hearts of men and women away from God and set them before gods of the world. It's almost reached beyond the imagination to think that God would deal so severely with his own people. When you look at this gruesome text, it's gruesome, y'all. He says, take the Levitical priesthood, put the swords by your side, and he went in and slayed literally thousands of people. That sounds harsh, don't it? I didn't want to preach this. I went out the pulpit. I wanted to come and shout. Then to come in here with this. I said, I'm going to make this thing where you got to say it. And I was sitting out there wanting to just say, we're going to leave. The Lord said, uh-huh. You, you give them this word because uh, I'm challenging you to challenge them. Come on, tell somebody, we got to deal with this poisonous stuff. And if you're not careful, the poisonous will try to get you to come to be like them. Oh, my God. Mm. It, it, it's so poisonous that, that the reason why folk can't deal with some of us because they're really inferior. Come on, tell us about that. That's the spirit of inferiority in the church. Mm. They, they, they feel that they're here, and so they deal with you accordingly because they think you below them, and that's poisonous, and they try to get you to look like them. They try to get you to act like them, but God says, I want you to act like what my word says. There's a poisonous spirit in the church. Poison the spirit in the church. And what it's doing is taking the heart speaking for the men and women. And it's beyond the imagination that you would see God want to sleep, but God says, I'm coming in to kill it because I want to preserve my people. Because when you sever the disease, the cure must come. So if, 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 if the disease is severe, then the cure has to be severe. Mm. The work that God puts in to kill the people is to put work in to bring a cure to the people. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're going through. But God says the cure that I'm bringing is going to overwhelm the severity of the disease that you've been dealing with. For some of you, that's in your body. You've been dealing with sickness in your body. And God is allowing you to go through things where he's cutting it up to bring healing. Can you just tell somebody cutting hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Cutting doesn't feel good. Cutting doesn't feel good. It hurts. It, 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 it doesn't make you feel good. But I decree and declare when God brings his healing, when God brings restoration, when God brings his love, it works. It works. The point is, God showed me, he said, Futrell, tell the people I'm doing a separation. Somebody shout separation. Separation. And he's showing us through this separation, Mother Yancey, the intensity of his love. And his unwillingness, here it is, God says, I have an unwillingness to share my heart with other gods. I, 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 my heart. He said, he said, he said, my heart. I said, God, what do you mean my heart? You talking about your heart? He said, no, my heart is you, the people. And I don't want my people sharing anything with anybody. It, it, even if he got to remove folk out of your life. I wish I had a church that say, God, even if you got to remove folk close to me out of my life. Anybody afraid to say that? Lift your hands and say, God, you got to remove folk that's close to me. My children, my family. And you got to remove the very thing that's close to me for me to get to the place where you want me to be healed. I'm willing to say yes to you. Somebody say, my yes is going to cost me. But yes well, my yes to the Lord will cost me friends. My yes to the Lord will cost me associates. My yes to the Lord will cost me being comfortable in the state that I'm in. My yes will cost me. You didn't know you saying, Sister Suzette, yes to the Lord, that you were going to go through things that you went through. I didn't know giving my light to the Lord, Sister Spragans, I was going to go through stuff. I keep telling y'all, when you first get saved, you better enjoy it. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody, when you first get saved, you enjoy that ride. The Lord was talking to you. He was walking with you. He was talking with you. He was 
telling you his own, but then when stuff start getting hard after two, three, four years, you start saying, Lord, where are you? Come on, he's there. He was there. He's there. And guess what? He was just showing you how to navigate and ride on the fact that he was talking. Do you know he holds you in his tender love and care when you first get saved? Yes. It's like there's a special love and a special endearment that's there. But then you get over in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to some folk that, that know after you get filled with the Holy Ghost and you get some maturity over this thing, and you get some clout with God, it's as if God ain't talking no more like he used to, but there's some strength on the inside of you to let you know you can stay. That's why you got to grow in grace. Look at somebody say, you got to grow in grace. Grow in grace. Peter said, grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You got to grow in grace. In this time that I'm in now, I know he's with me because the Holy Ghost is on the inside of me. He ain't talking to me like he used to. But I got to know that I know on the inside that I'm sanctified. Anybody know he, he talks in your spirit, man? And he, he makes you he makes you sit down and study the word. He makes you get in your prayer closet and he makes you do some work. And, and, and it's not religious. Tell somebody he ain't religious. It's to put you in the place. It's to help you. So you better understand through separation, it's for your benefit. And that's, and mother, I, I didn't understand separation. It hurt me. I thought because it was hurting that I was doing something wrong. Uh, come on, come on. Anybody know that sometimes you can be doing everything right? You can be loving the Lord. You can be hearing from God. And then it's your situation that's a breakdown. It's, it's your life that's a failure. It, it, it's your life uh -oh, that's on public display. Anybody know what I'm talking about when your life is on public display? That's why she sang the song, For Your Glory. Anybody know that it's not about you? I, I just come to realize, Evangelist Washington, that in this season, it ain't about me. But it's about God getting the glory out of me. That's why he separated me, to get the glory out of me. Do you know that sometimes we're not careful? The very thing God bless us with, we'll use it and turn it over to the enemy. You do understand when they left Egypt, they left out loaded. Come on, tell somebody, they left out of bondage. Loaded. Only to be in the wilderness, giving up what they had to make a calf. Y'all just missed it. And, and some of us do the same thing. Now walk now. Don't, you ain't too far from Egypt. You ain't too far from the Egyptians. I mean, uh, the Israelites coming out of Egypt. The Lord bless you, and the Lord face smiles upon you. Only for you to get out and still serve what's inside of you. We ain't too far removed. Quit, quit acting like you are. That's why he gave me this word. He said, tell the church they're not too far removed from the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. The very thing they wanted, pray, Lord, get us out of bondage. Get us out of this. Says so Roby, get us out of bondage. We raise a deliverer. He gets them to the Red Sea. They see the work of hand, the hand of God, only to go in the wilderness because they didn't have their leader for a moment. That's why saints, you better find yourself loving God and don't get caught up on where I am. Y'all don't want to hear that. That's somebody part. should say that part. that part. Come on, look at somebody say that part. That part. Chanel, your, your, your hope got to be in Jesus. Yeah. Your, your hope can't be in Bishop Destiny. Your hope can't be in Dr. Cottrell. Your hope can't be in all creation. Your hope got to be built on Jesus. Yeah. You're not careful, you miss out on your walk. Now, Kirk, you miss out on, on, on what you should be doing trying to look at me. We don't know what happened to Moses. He was getting a revelation from the Lord to bring order back down to them because they out of order. Get him so upset, he broke all the commandments. Literally. You'll, 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 you'll get that tomorrow. He broke all the commandments. All of them. Tell somebody he broke all of them. He was, he had seen God, and God walked past him, gave him a word. He had been behind the veil, he, and, and, and he said, nobody, they say, nobody ain't seen God in Leah. He said, I want to see you. He did the revelation for the people, and the people got their own revelation 
and the assistant pastor was helping. Mm -hmm. Leaders, you got to be careful when you're given delegated authority. Oh, I don't want to hear this. Jesus. I don't hear you. You, you got to be careful, brother preachers, because you, 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 you heard them talk about it in the seminar. I don't know if you were there. A lot of folk wasn't there. See, they miss it. See, see, we want the hooping and the hollering and the music and stuff. But the real instruction that went forth was Monday through Friday in the seminar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that was that was the meat of it. You, 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 you do understand the reason why we were across is not to be cute. Right. We don't want to cross to be cute. We want to cross in our over our heart to remind us of the burden that we're bound to God. And here it is. Uh, watch. I mean, Mother Lucas. They sit up here and and, and, and get caught up with leadership. Can you lift your hand and say, Lord, help me have a heart of a leader? Help me to have the heart of the leader. Had Aaron had the heart of Moses, he would have directed them to say he's getting a word from the Lord. But it's something when leadership participates in the scene. The text says, I'm sorry, Evangelist Drake Conway, the text says that he led them to nakedness. Hmm. Then just said, all I did was took the gold, told them to get it because they wanted something in front of them, and, and out came. He, look how the leader talks. Yeah. Out came the calf. So he wasn't even a good second leader to take responsibility for what he did. Oh. Is this a text? Yes. What are you saying? Yes. What are you saying? I, don't, I want to prophesy to you that you're coming out, but before you come out, God's going to cut you. Yes, sir. What did somebody say? We in a cutting season. Yes, sir. He's snipping away. Yes, sir. He's cutting you to heal you. He, he's cutting things that you've been, that you, that you been, been attached to for so long. He's removing folk out your life. Sometimes in the midst of it, we can't praise him. But, but, but when we get out of it, sometimes we got to just look back and say, God, I thank you. That, that, that you know more about me and where I'm going than my emotions and what I am right now. Come on, Mr. Come on, say, God is showing separation. God is showing separation. Saints, to take the Lord's side is no small issue. Take the Lord's side <clears throat> as you get off with the world. In other words, you're either in the Lord's camp and for the Lord, or you're in the enemy's camp and you're for the enemy. Wow. I'm going to make tell you that the Bible says, I'm going to give you some scripture. 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having what? This seal. That the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. Paul writes to Timothy and said, nevertheless, the foundation of God is sure that the Lord knows that you belong to him. Amen. And if you name, he wasn't talking to no sinners. He was talking to the church. This hit me like a ton of bricks. Everyone that named the name of Christ, let them do what? Depart. Be cut away. Be separated or be separated from hidden sin. Why do you use iniquity? Because I believe in the church we've learned and grown custom to hidden stuff. That we're more concerned about hiding things from the person we sit next to and who we fellowship with on Sunday when God sees it. I was born in sin in my mother's womb. I was what? Also shaped in iniquity. So is it safe to say that there are certain things all of us in here, all of us that are watching will be prone to do if our, if our spirit man is not in control? You, you have the propensity to do things just because it's in your nature. Come on, just tell somebody it's in my nature. It's in my nature. It's in my nature. There's certain things, Sister Faye, that, that, that Marquello 
will do because it's just in my nature. For some, it's cussing. Right? Some of you, the Lord cleaned your mouth. And, and some, I heard somebody say, hallelujah. <laughs> and if you go back and get upset for real, that, that flesh will rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we in the dark, but it's for a reason. I just come to realize when That's I pulled good. up today that God didn't want us to be covered up with music and singing. He wanted me to hear, let you hear what he's saying. Come on, look at somebody and say, if I ain't careful, I'll cut up. Oh, I, I'm telling you, you, you clown me enough. I may, I, may, I may take the Holy Ghost and say, get over here and let me walk right in my flesh. Y'all, see, y'all don't want to be real. Y'all see, that's your problem. Some of y'all want to act you in church. I don't see you at home. Look at somebody and say, you don't see me at home. And I'm glad you don't. Come on, be real. Say my flesh will act up if I let it. Take ownership and say my flesh will mess up if I let it. If I let my flesh go, it's going to have the right of way. That's why you better know who side you on. That's why you better know who saved you. That's why you better know who delivered you. My flesh will climb. Yeah. And sometimes it will clown and you be looking like, did I just say that? <laughs> and your name ain't Urkel. Yeah. You be wondering like, did anybody ever look back at your life and you think, what was I thinking? Yeah. Yeah. You knew what you were thinking. Yeah. You was being led by the, the, the Bible describes it like this. You were being led, even swamped by the dictates of your flesh. Come on. You was giving it to the dictate. Your, your flesh was dictating what it wanted to do. And you were being led. That's why people can snort drugs. That's why folk can get high. That's why folk can do what they want drinking and stuff. Because they follow the dictates of their flesh. And I don't care how cute you are. I don't care how safe you sit in here now. If you ain't careful, there's some devices that will try to attach itself to you. They cause you to go to hell if you ain't careful. I don't care who you are. Bishop on down. I don't care who we are. Clergy on down. There's just certain things that if we ain't careful, yes. we'll leave God. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. If we don't, if we don't keep our spirit man in control yes. and connected to God, yes. your flesh will lead you out there. Yes. And you'll be in a backslidden state. That's why you gotta reckon yourself dead. Yes. What's reckon? And then I'm going here. And reckon, he's, that means consider. He, come on, tell somebody, you better consider your flesh dead. Yes. And, and, and can I be honest? Ooh, sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Yes. And you know what's the best way to talk to yourself? Get your behind in the mirror and look. And you tell yourself, you going to do right today. You going to get this word today. And can I talk like my pastor? And if, if you ain't careful, I'll put you on a three-day fast. Come on. Look at somebody else and tell them, you better talk to yourself like that. I had to tell myself yesterday, you going to the gym. You going. Get to the gym. My trainer went there. You know I had to make a choice. To either, see, the trainer helps me. That's why I pay her. Come on. Come on. You gotta have people that's gonna push you when you can't push yourself. Y'all don't wanna hear me. Come on, you gotta have people that's gonna help you when you in your pit. Look at somebody say, Can you help me when I'm down? But sometimes God will put you in a situation where no one is around you but you and him, and you got to speak the word of the Lord over yourself. I'm in the gym. Text my trainer. I thought she was in the office. I say, uh, I forgot to confirm. She said, oh, if I wasn't out running, I'd book you up. And I said, no, that's okay. I'm going to run too. I had to make myself do it. You got to make yourself do it. Because the end result is going to benefit you. Oh, my God. You, you may not understand the light afflictions that you're going through now. Come on. Come on. I may not understand what I'm going through now. But when I get through, he's going to establish me. He's going to perfect me. He's going to settle me. He's going to make it all good. Come on, come on, just tell us right. Don't, don't worry about what you're going through now. Stick to the 
process and let it work for you. And when you come out, you're going to see the benefit of why you had to go through it. You don't hear a lot of, the Lord, he said, son, you got to say it. I said, God, this Sunday, he said, you got to say it. He said, you don't hear a lot of preaching like that anymore. You don't hear nothing about heaven or hell. Now, y'all know. Oh, my God. Where are you going to be in heaven? Where are you going to spend eternity? You're going to either be in heaven or hell. Come on, that's going to be it now. Come on. So look at somebody and say, you're going to either be in heaven or hell. There's no in between, tomorrow. There's no great places. It's black and white in this thing. God said, get to tell the people it's black and white. You, there's some stuff God just told me. Tell them at all creation. There's just some stuff He ain't playing no more. You got to lay aside everywhere. Yeah. He told me, He said, tell the people to lay aside every weight and the sin. And. So that means some of us dealing with sin. Mm -hmm. It's quite cold. Ooh, it is quiet. That so does what? Easily. Yeah. Does this make sense to them? Yes. 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 Somebody say, God is, God is clearing the ground, clearing the ground right, now right now for the greatest, for the greatest outpour, outpour of, his spirit of his spirit that the world has ever seen. That's what he told me. He said, tell the church that I'm clearing the ground right now for the greatest outpouring of my spirit that the world has ever seen. But he said, but. Uh -oh. He said, but in order to create the right environment for the visitation, preparation must be thorough. Come on. Come on, say that with me. To create, to create the right, the right environment, environment for this outpour, for this, outpour, for this, visitation, for this visitation, preparation. Preparation. Must be thorough. Must be thorough. <laughs> you know, we got a bunch of folk in the church that don't stand against anything. A bunch of folk that's coming in, they preach, do a seed, and they're gone. I thought the church was for souls. When you make God's priority souls and, 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 and be about kingdom of business, finances will come. Amen. You know what I'm saying? When you are about God's kingdom of business, he'll finance it. He'll finance it. I'm going to give you a testimony about this girl right here. Tell me what God will do. And God ain't a respect of persons. When you're about kingdom agenda, and when you're about God's business, he'll pay your bills. Amen. Amen. Anybody a witness that God, come on. Anybody a witness can take both their hands and say, God paid my bills and just paid my bills. Amen. I was sitting in the pulpit. And I was sitting there. It's almost like the church is a good old boys club. Mm -hmm. I, I sit there and wonder. I say, God, how am I going to deal with your people that you say are so great? And I see how they deal with, 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 with people. And I know I'm on, on, on live. But, but I see how they, they have respect of persons for certain statuses and certain mm -hmm. locations and certain See, and, and now people that didn't deal with me before got to deal with me now. I, yeah. I see how people have a respect of persons. And I, I see how, how people play games. And uh, how, how, how last time I checked, you ain't supposed to go up without being invited. Yeah. Just look at somebody and say, you're not supposed to go up unless you're invited. Because if you go up on your own, you'll be asked to come down and you'll be embarrassed as you take the walk. But when God puts one up, guess what he does? He always takes down another. Because when you put yourself up, you're putting yourself up with other people. And the people that don't want you there will tell you to get down. But when God puts you up, you're up. 
Don't, yes. don't, 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 don't make a, a name for yourself. Let God make your name. In this season, in order for us to receive this visitation, there has to be preparation. Yep. And we have to prepare ourselves. And as we prepare ourselves, what's going to happen? He's going to help us. He's ain't no good old boys club. You can't join the club. Tell somebody you can't join the club. Because it's not a club. It's a family. You must be born into the family. You must be born again. And, and you can't be like Dick and Demas and come by night. You gotta come, you, you gotta come through the sheep door. Because you call us out of what? Darkness. We were child of light. Guess what? God said, tell the church, you shouldn't like dark anymore. Because you're a child of the light, Mother Watson, you shouldn't like dark. You, matter of fact, you shouldn't even be attracted to dark things. Okay. I just say dark people. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Paul meant. He said, I have no fellowship with unfruitfulness works of darkness. But rather, he said in Ephesians 5 11, I reprove them. The preacher of the gospel, as a preacher of the gospel, especially one who prophetically gives the word of the Lord, this message for me is harder than any other times. And it made it hard because of the status of where we are today. But guess what? I have to accept each assignment with the same attitude of gratitude and be thankful that God will choose me to release the word. So friends, we're living in a world where everything goes. There are no boundaries of decency and honor anymore. You got bonnets, people coming out naked, people just doing things. It's no honor, tell somebody there's no honor anymore. The very thing that you honor will reward you. Are you listening to me? The most difficult thing is that very same attitude has snaked its way into the church and in many pulpits. One of the mistakes identifying characteristics I'm done with this of this spirit is there's nothing wrong. You see it in you see the society. It's just that everything is okay. There's nothing wrong. This new gospel of relativity that determines right or wrong on the basis of whether you think it's right or wrong for you. But the problem is. That ideology will send you straight to hell. I know I don't talk like this, but I'm doing it, y'all. It will send you straight to the pits of hell where you will bust hell wide open. Can you say this with me? Sin is sin. Sin is sin. Whether you think it is or not, sin is sin. We are not saved from sin and left our own, our own selves to choose our own happy path in life. Wherever it may take us, we are saved from sin. And guess what we're saved to do? To live righteously. To live soberly. I know this may sound foreign to you. To live holy. And to live godly. I'm, I'm, I had to go pull out my old reservoir stuff. What, what kept me? <laughs> Titus chapter 2. Verse 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has what? Hath appeared, Mother Duncan, to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, y'all ain't never heard this. That's why you're looking at me like this. Get it in your spirit. I'll read it again. I'm uncomfortable, but I got to do it. I'm out here now. <laughs> he took my power. <clears throat> But he didn't take his power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what he told me when I pulled up. He said, I took your power because you was going to let it be easy today. Mm. And he said, what, you going to go get something else to make them happy because they out in the dark? He said, I, I did it to make you uncomfortable. Mm. He said, and I kept you away from the church. Then Deacon Freddie had to pop past. I'm sorry. I'm usually here. Deacon Moy had to say something. We usually checking on church. He set me up. I said, 
said, God, you give me these scriptures that the church taught us on. He said, that's what you need to tell these folks because some of them ain't never heard it. That's why they still dealing with stuff when they need your presence. Mm -hmm. Write it down. I feel a boldness on me. Write it down. Titus 2, 11 and 12. Preach. That the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Come on. Come on. Tell us why it was the grace of God that brought salvation to me. And it appeared to all men, humankind, teaching us what? Teaching. That denying us. The grace of God comes upon all men through salvation. Yeah. And he teaches us. Amen. What does he teach us? That you must deny something. Yes. Yeah. You gotta deny something. Yes. Every day you get up, you gotta give something back to God. Say, God, take this from me. <laughs> that denying what? Ungodliness. And what? Worldly lust. So when you deny that ungodly lifestyle that you got saved from through the grace of God, and now teaches us that you got to get delivered uh, from things. Not just that ungodly is of you, but with the worldly lust that's out there that will try to get you to come back. That you must do what? <coughs> live soberly. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, to live righteously. Yes. To live soberly. To live holy. And to live godly. Mm -hmm. that, that when you live soberly, when you live righteously, when you live godly, you can do it in this present world. Mm -hmm. Dear friend, when you stand with Jesus, that's a big deal. Probably bigger than most of you would admit. Because when you stand with Jesus, you're going to lose them, folks. And that's what we're afraid of. We're afraid of what it's going to cost us. We're, we're afraid of how people are going to look. They talked about you anyway. You just didn't know it. <laughs> and the reason why you didn't know it because you were sitting around when the other person went around talking about them. <laughs> Tell somebody, let them talk. <laughs> I'd rather have Jesus on my side. <laughs> let them talk. <laughs> you don't know how free I am because when I was in the world, I was condemned. Y'all yeah. yeah. yeah, want to be real. Yeah. It was pleasurable. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that. Yeah. Anybody that teach you that you just got delivered and wasn't no fun, it was pleasurable with some things that I did. Yeah. I wish the church would help me. Maybe the mothers would remember what they did. Maybe the preachers would remember what they did. It was fun. But after I stopped having fun and got by myself, I didn't want to be by myself because it was lonely. Yes. I didn't want to be in the dark because I had to deal with me. I didn't. I didn't want to look in the mirror because I wasn't happy with what I saw. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They say, "Preacher, that was me." I wasn't happy with what I saw. I didn't like what I was looking at. Skin looked weird. Face looked funny. I had no real joy after, after it was but for a moment. Come on. Sin was but for a moment. Because after I, I did what I wanted to do, I didn't like how I felt getting up from my bed of affliction. Y'all funny. Lady, you didn't like having that big belly and you didn't have nobody to walk with you as a husband. Come on. Oh my God. Come on. You didn't make that baby by yourself, so you ain't supposed to be by yourself. But... It didn't show like that when it was fun. Ooh, he had me going in circles. <laughs> he fine, girl. Come on, sir. But then when he showed you his ugly side. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to anybody here? On, when she showed you how crazy she was. <laughs> you saw living some bulls out there. Too late now. Are you, are you hearing me? Is this helping anybody? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, look, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy knowing I had to. You, you can say what you want. I'm the bishop now, or soon to be the bishop. Hey, I'm designate. <laughs> it wasn't, well, mother, it wasn't cute. Me having two girls with my baby. That's my story. That's my story. I had two, two, two women walking around in 2002 carrying my seed. It wasn't cute. I wasn't happy. But God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Yeah. Come on. Just look at somebody.
somebody and say, I'm glad he got plans for me. Because my plans mess me up. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad he got plans for me. Because the plans I have for myself mess me up. And we know that all things work together. I'm so glad they work together for the good of him that love God. Tell somebody, I know where I'm standing. I know where I'm standing. <laughs> Can I get another one? Sit in. I told you I had to go for these old ones that y'all taught me when I was a little kid. Uh, First Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. If you ever want to teach on doctrine of holiness, here it is. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. No idolaters, no adulterers, no infamy, or no abuses of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, or covenants of directors, or revilers, or extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Look at this, Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are what? Manifest. Yeah. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, various emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such a like of which I tell you before, as I've told you in times past, that they which do such things shall do what? Not inherit. I didn't say because we've done it. Paul writes it because you do it. That means your heart, your spirit. Quit telling folk the spirit of homosexuality. Ain't no spirit. That's the works of the flesh. Come on. Y'all don't want to hear me. Look, look at your name and say homosexuality no spirit. Homosexuality. It's the works of the flesh. It's the works of the flesh. But because you get caught up in the works of the flesh, spirits can get attached to you. So, so don't be afraid that, that people who, who struggle with homosexuality come into the church. If that's the case, I need to be afraid of heterosexuality. Yeah. Y'all don't want to hear that. Oh, what are you saying? Do, 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 do. When do I pick up a spirit when I sleep around with somebody that's not my wife? Come on. When does that happen? Talk to me. It happens when you enter into a union sexually. So the spirit is not the act. The spirit of what is what happens through the closeness of the soul time. So if I pick up on spirits because of the soul tie and I connect with your soul, I got to do a teaching on this. The same thing happens when it's same sex. Anybody want to be real? And say you was delivered, you love the Lord, and then you had a crazy dream yeah. of what you used to do yeah. or what you wanted to do. <laughs> Some of y'all got your head down and don't want to look at me. <laughs> but, but Mother of Lucas, I'm saved and I love the Lord. And if the other day, if I be real, I had some stuff going on in my dream that I had to say, Lord, loose it. Yeah. Come on. You don't want to hear. Sometimes you got to be careful with gifts you receive from people because that could be the spirit of it. Come on, come on, come on. So why you saying I rebuke this spirit because of homosexuality? No, get rid of the underwear that they gave you. Get rid of the clothes that they bought you. Me and my wife got married. I kept trying to figure out why stuff was going on. I realized that it's because of the bedroom set. Y'all don't, don't want to hear this type of season. Them lingerie outfits you used to wear on the cruise with your ex, you better burn that Sorry, stuff. Come on. Come, on. Come on. You bring in stuff from previous relationships and you wonder why you still feel his spirit. You feel his hurt. You wearing the stuff they bought. Get rid of Loosen and let it go. Yeah, yeah. Literally. Do we had a dream? I said, oh my God. I had to pray. I had to pray. It wasn't no sin. 
But if you don't deal with that stuff, yes, you start trying to act and you be wondering where stuff comes from. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. yes. The issue is not homosexuality, it's soul tie. Yes. And it's, it's, it's what's in you that made you gravitate to that. The same way you, the, the single person that's heterosexual you need to figure out what made them gravitate to that person. Yes. Why did you deal with the dope head? You knew he was on dope. You, you got you to gotta check yourself. I let it happen. Come on, open up your mouth and say, I let it happen. I didn't, win any, I didn't go in with blinders. I saw what I wanted. And if we ain't careful, we go after what we want. Yes. Does this make sense? Yes. Anybody know what it means to go after what you want and you yes. wish you didn't get what you got? Yes. And you start saying, what was I doing? What'd you say? God never told me to marry me in the first place. Could it be that some of y'all are dealing with issues that you never were supposed to be entangled with, but because you didn't seek the face of God, you've been doing hard as this is Joshua said, three and five, sanctify yourselves. Look at somebody and say, sanctify yourself. Sanctify, sanctify means to be set apart exclusively used for the master's use. Thanks. He got me out of my comfort zone. He wants us to come up. Can you look at somebody and say, it's time to come up? I don't care what level you are. I don't care what position you have. It's time to come up. Come up. You can't respond in the flesh, Dominique. We can't. We can't. We can't respond in our flesh. We 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 have to be willing and obedient. If we gonna get the good of the land, so as as we, we we gotta deal with what's on the inside. God is calling us to fast and pray. Some things only gonna come out if except we fast. And pray. The reason why you don't see results is because you're praying on me. I'm telling you, I'm sitting there looking at my son. And I can talk about him where I come from. I know he's smart. None of them got lowered in the 24 on the ACT. None of them. They all went to school that they wanted to go to. But I saw, she'll tell you, I received the warning from three people. And the devil fell out to show his hand. He said, I'm doing it to get you. He messed up for telling me. <laughs> for those of you that's dealing with situations with your children, it's to get you off track. It, it's to get you off your A game. So he just told me the other day, when we was talking, I was listening to my son. Just last night I was listening to him. I got a righteous indignation that came on me, and I just shut him down. I said, man, your problem is you ain't committed. You make excuses. You know why? Because black women and black men, we cover for our black men. And we accept more mess off of them than a little bit. You ain't got, you ain't got to say, man, I'm talking about your husband. I'm talking about your uncle. And I'm definitely talking about your mother's your son. You know you do. You know you do. I'm hungry. Come here, son, eat. Send they bus back home and make them eat where they live at. Anybody want to raise your hand and say, I cover for my boys, mothers, and I created monsters? Figures of me. Raise your hand. I know I have. Forty dollars here and there adds up, and you 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 unwisely pulling them out of situations, and you mess them up because they keep coming back to you, and you wonder why you got a, a money problem. I start looking at what I give Mark and Chris and these kids. I say that's my problem. They are. 
You know what he told me? Put the word in them like you're supposed to. Give them the word. I mean, I was, mother, I'm, you talking about letting them in? They were ready to go then. He couldn't even finish his steak. <laughs> So you sitting here ordering New York strip. New York strip. I ain't even got a. I got a pork chop. <laughs> Sidebar. Somebody take you out to eat. Follow their lead. When you know you ain't paying. Think of Freddie getting eggs and bacon. I gotta get eggs and bacon. I'm not getting. A, let me get a steak and fried eggs, please. No, he ain't buying no steak. Don't you buy none. Come on, tell, tell somebody you gotta follow Lee. I'm sitting there eating pork chops. You know, you get that New York strip, medium well, sauce on the side, loaded baked potato, whole sauce. I'm sitting there, I've created this. <laughs> Let me get a pasta, extra shrimp. This is what's going on. $200-something bill at Outback. We could have went to the grocery store and made steaks. Your mama could have been an outback. I thought everybody was getting pasta. And the Lord showed me last night. He said, you created this. My kids skipped over Happy Meals. I never bought Happy Meals. They was getting the big kids, the mighty kids in them. They was getting the number two, the Big Macs and stuff. The 10 piece. When they were in them, 10 piece. They... Lord says, you created it. Now pull back and teach him, show him he's not committed. I was ministering my son at the restaurant. I said, you're not committed. You're not committed. Ministry's at home first. I don't know who needs to hear this, but your ministry's at home. Don't you do more outside of your house than you're doing your home. Your ministry's at home. Your ministry's at home. That's your ministry. Mike's your ministry. Michelle is your ministry. Sister, Sister Janice is your ministry. Do you receive this? Yes. Listen to me. I'm done. Start preparing for what's about to happen. God's about to do great things. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I don't care who the president, I don't care what happens with the debt ceiling. God knows them that are his. Isaac sowed a seed in a famine and received a harvest that same year. Nothing for life. Nothing too hard for God. God's going to take us higher. Amen. Let me change it. God is taking us high. God is taking us high. Know whose side you're on. Amen. Know where you're standing. Father, I thank you for these your people that have gathered. Bless us as we leave this place with nothing from your presence. Thank you for this house. Thank you for the people that are faithful to this ministry. We bless you for it now. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. we pray. Amen. Amen. In all creation.